Years passed, and Kwame lived in constant fear and torment. The darkness within him grew stronger, gnawing at his sanity. He wandered the outskirts of the village, shunned by the people he once called friends. The spirits haunted his every step, whispering in his ears and filling his dreams with nightmares. Nana Efua, now an old woman, watched as the consequences of her actions unfolded. She had lost Edwoa, who had left the village to escape the sorrow and darkness that now shrouded her family. Guilt weighed heavily on Nana Efua, but the path she had chosen left no room for redemption. The spirits she had summoned were relentless, their hunger for torment insatiable. One fateful night, as the village slept under the gaze of a blood-red moon, a chilling wind swept through the huts. Kwame, restless and unable to sleep, felt an unbearable pull towards the forest. The whispers grew louder, more insistent. He knew the spirits were calling him back. Driven by a force he could not resist, Kwame ventured into the forest once more. The trees seemed to close in around him, their branches reaching out like skeletal hands. He stumbled through the darkness, his heart pounding with fear and anticipation. The spirit's voices filled his mind, promising him an end to his torment if he completed one final task. Deep within the forest, Kwame found himself at the foot of the Tree of Woe, where Nana Efua had cast the original curse. The air was thick with a malevolent energy. The spirits materialized, their forms shifting and grotesque, eyes gleaming with hunger. You must find the heart of the forest, they commanded. Only then will you be free. The heart of the forest was a legendary artifact, said to be hidden in the deepest, most dangerous part of the forest. It was rumored to possess unimaginable power, capable of granting wishes but at a terrible cost. Kwame had no choice but to obey. The alternative was an eternity of torment. For days, Kwame journeyed deeper into the forest, facing horrors that would break a lesser man. The spirits tested him, unleashing visions of his darkest fears and deepest regrets. He encountered creatures of nightmare, barely escaping with his life each time. The forest itself seemed alive, shifting and changing to confuse and trap him. As he reached the heart of the forest, he found a clearing bathed in a strange, otherworldly light. In the center stood an ancient, twisted tree with a pulsating, glowing core, the heart of the forest. As Kwame approached, he felt a surge of power, but also a deep, resonant fear. The spirits surrounded him, their forms coalescing into a dark, menacing presence. Take the heart and your suffering will end, they hissed. But know this, the price is your soul. Desperate for an end to his torment, Kwame reached out and grasped the heart of the forest. A wave of power surged through him, and for a moment, he felt invincible. But as the power coursed through his veins, he realized the terrible truth. The spirits had deceived him. The heart was a prison, and by taking it, he had sealed his fate. Kwame screamed as the darkness consumed him, his body twisting and contorting. The spirits laughed, their voices echoing through the forest. Kwame's soul was bound to the heart, and he became a part of the forest's malevolent force, a guardian of the very darkness that had tormented him. Back in the village, the people felt a shift in the air. The forest, once a place of danger but also of life, became a realm of shadows and fear. Nana Efua, sensing the terrible fate that had befallen Kwame, wept for the first time in years. Her actions had brought ruin not only to Kwame but also to the village and herself. Adwoa, now far away, felt a cold shiver run down her spine. Though she had tried to move on, the ties to her past were too strong. She knew she had to return and face the darkness that had consumed her village and the man she once loved.